Today I'd like to show you how to make a cute little bag with handles um, using six inch squares. So fun little bag, not very big, great to put some little treats in. Chocolates always look nice in a bag like that. Um, all sorts of things would be great in there, a little bunch of flowers, anything you can think of really. And so I'm just going to show you I've used, I have a pattern for this. It's on my website on gourmetquilter.com. Um, and as I said, the ingredients for the bag are just five six inch squares. So I've got some six inch squares sitting here ready to show you how to do this bag. Uh, so really quite kind of quick and easy, uh, touch fiddly because it's little um, and it's quite reversible too. So it doesn't really matter which way out you have the bag, it's the same inside and out. So that's kind of fun. And because I've used six inch squares, I've used different colors. So we've got this little multicolored bag, which I think is quite cute. You could of course do it in different color schemes. You could do all sorts of things. So what I've got here is a total of five six inch squares and I've got a pile of four over here and I've got one over here. You need to pick one that's going to be the fabric that you use for your handles. So I've got that one over here and I'm going to just cut that in half. And while we're here doing the cutting, so I've now got two three inch by six inch strips. Whilst I'm doing the cutting, I might as well go ahead and cut out the bag shape as well. So in your pattern, there's a shape to trace in there for you. And I've already cut mine out of a piece of paper here. This is the shape I want. So initially though, we're going to also cut these four. So I've got a stack of four squares. I'm going to cut them in half. So right up the middle, up the three inch line. So now I've got two piles of four three inch by six inch strips. And so I've cut out my pattern piece already, which I'm going to just lay on top of there to help me as a guide for cutting. So I'm going to leave the four stack together and I'm going to position that on there and I'm going to lay my ruler over the top and I'm just going to trim off these funny little corner bits just to give us a little bit of shaping on this bag. And then I'm going to do the same thing down the bottom here. Now there's a little bit of a curve going on. You could use scissors or you could use your rotary cutter and I tend to like to use my rotary cutter so I'm just going to come in with my rotary cutter like that and cut that shape out there. And now I need to do the same thing with the other little set. We need two sets. I wouldn't recommend cutting more than four fabrics at a time because I think that uh, four is enough. Um, uh, otherwise the fabrics can move and you can get inaccuracies with your cutting. Um, just make sure when you're doing this sort of a cut that you're well positioned with your hands and things and everything's away from you so that you can't have a little accident with your cutter. And again to do this bottom shape here. So if you were doing just checking that your shape is right, the point of this shape is actually a little right angle point. So you could actually use the rotary cutter just to cut to that point, just as a slightly different way of doing it. And then you still just need to round off just these little corners. So that's always an option if you feel more comfortable doing that. So these bits here we don't need, not a lot of wastage for this bag, pretty good. And now I'm going to bring the iron over because we're going to do the handles and get them ready first. So we've got our two strips here ready for the handles and I'm just going to press them in half, both of them, along the length. And then I'm going to press again. I want my handles to be not too wide and, I, and the reason I've left a lot of fabric in them is because it gives them a little bit of strength and that they'll kind of stand up nicely which helps the bag look good. So I'm just going to come in about a third and then a third over again so that you've got a strip that's probably just slightly over half an inch wide. Then I'm going to stitch those down. So we'll do that again with this other one. So in about a third and then a third over again so that that fold sits near the other fold. And press that. And then we're going to stitch that. So we'll go to the sewing machine. So we're, we're just top stitching. So you want the edges with the raw edges right inside and then the fold over the top. 
and then we're just going to stitch down close to the folded edge on both sides. And we can put the other one in as well. Just make sure that that raw edges are hidden inside there. And then we can just turn around and come back down close to the opposite side. So there we've got two handles. Now we can set those aside for the moment. We don't need those just yet. And we've got our other shapes to use here. So what I'm going to do is start sewing them together in pairs. So right sides together. And I'm using batiks. I might say delicious Hoffman batiks even. And often you can't tell which is the right and the wrong side. So I'm going to sew them. Because we've got the lining ones as well, we can just chain piece through the, through four pairs because that's how many pieces we've got and so just to, with your quarter inch seam allowance just come right the way down and just go around that curve and just right to the end of that seam there and then continue on and do the other th three sets the same way so I finished sewing all my pairs together and at this stage I think I'm just going to press this seam because it, it'll just help the bag sit a bit better. So I've actually already pressed this one, but I'll show you how to do that because of the curved seam. I'm just pressing the seam to one side. So I'm going to lay down one shape and then just press over gently on that straighter part of it. And then just into that little curve a little bit and then turn it around and then press in the same direction still on the rest of the curve there. And it's just going to allow that seam to sit nicely when you turn the bag out the right way. So I've already done this shape here, which is the other half of my bag. I've actually already joined these other two pairs up into the bag. So I'll just show you now how these two halves make a hole. So right sides together, and you might want to tuck that in so that it's sitting inside the two shapes like that, so like I said, right sides together. And now just sew this whole seam all the way around to make that the bag shape. So you need two of these so that we've got a lining and the outside of the bag. So just ease around those curves a little bit. Make sure that the edges are all still sitting together. Just with your normal quarter inch seam allowance. And so there we've got the inside of our bag until I turn it out the other way of course, but we're going to leave it like that for the moment. So we've got two of these pieces now, one for the inside, one for the outside, and then we're going to put our handles on next. So we've already prepared our handles, and at this stage a couple of pins, or maybe four pins, would be handy. So when you look at the bag when it's finished, you've got kind of a flat side which has got the handle on it, on each side. So you just need to decide whether there's any preference for your bag on how you do that. I'm going to have the green facing me, or this sort of goldy color and so with my handles I'm going to now just pin them in place and they're just going to sit just on one panel just inside that seam allowance so kind of up against the seam allowance and I pin those in place so that they're just where I want them and if you do both of them onto the one bag shape that works quite well
and then I'm actually going to do this all in one go. Sometimes I would stitch those on, but I think on, in this case we don't need to. I've got my other bag shape here that's still inside out. And this one's out the right way, but we're going to put them in so that they're right sides together. And then position that so that all the seams match and your bag handles are where you want them. And either add some more pins or repin those so that everything is sitting nicely in place with the seams. So I've matching. got all my four pins in holding the handles and with the raw edges even. Now we're going to sew around but we do need to leave a gap. So I'm suggesting that you start and stop a fairly tight gap but just between two of the handles. So start on the handle, sew all the way around and finish when you get to the next handle but, but cover the handle in your stitching and just have a little gap in between. So again with our quarter inch seam allowance, so we're sewing on the inside of the circle, this might not be easy for you to see because it's pretty tight in here. So I'm stitching right where the handle starts. And I'm going to stitch all the way around. So just making sure that your edges are staying together and that you've got it nice and flat ahead of where you're sewing. That will help quite a lot, keep everything in place for you. And right over the next set of handles. And keep coming around, just make sure it stays all together and nice and flat ahead of you. And we're right back to the start now. So just make sure you've included that handle in your sewing. Snip off those threads. So we're almost done with our bag already. So we've got our little gap sitting here. So we're going to turn our bag out. As I said, it's a fairly tight little hole, but I'm pretty sure that it's big enough to turn our bag through. And the handles they make it a little bit tight but just a little bit of gentle encouragement we can do this so there we've got the handle if i pull that through that makes it much easier and pull the rest of the bag through as well so that you've got a completely inside out looking arrangement and yes it's looking fiddlier than it should do it's the handles that make it quite fiddly. So if you can get them both through, the rest of it will follow. And there we have it. So what we've now got is this very strange looking bag with handles at each side, which we don't really want. We're actually going to pop one of them inside because it is a reversible bag and one is the lining. And so we've done pretty well so far. So now what we want to do around this top edge, so we've got our gap between two handles on this side here. We want to make sure that that inside, tucked in, is the seam allowance. So that when we come around, we're going to do a row of stitching around to hold all that and to close that gap, that that's sitting nice and flat for us. And that's looking pretty good. And just finger press around your seam so that it's all sitting nicely along that top edge there. And then I'm going to go back to the sewing machine now and I'm going to stitch maybe an eighth of an inch down um, on that near that um, top seam there. So we finger press that down back to the sewing machine. And doesn't really matter where you start stitching because you're going to go all the way around and approximately an eighth of an inch down from the fold. And when you get to this little gap here, just stitching right across so that those edges are nice and little. This is a great little bag. And you could leave it at that, 
but I personally quite like to do an extra row of stitching around near the top there for no particularly good reason other than I think it just gives it a nice rim. So I'm going to go back in and sew now just about a quarter of an inch down from the previous line of sewing all the way around. There's another little row of top stitching and I just feel it gives that top edge a little bit of um, stability and helps hold it sit quite nicely. So all the way around, if you can see all this is quite pretty. Again, when you're working on something tight like this, just make sure that ahead of it, you've flattened out enough to do some sewing and stop and keep readjusting that sort of thing. Don't let it get to you. And by doing a little back stitch, you can just stitch your close your threads off close at the end there. And here we have a little bag with handles made out of six inch squares. How cute is that? So we now have thread sticking out which we'll trim off. We now have two little bags with handles and how great for a little gift bag to keep a little stash of something delicious in. I don't really mind what you use them for. I just thought they were really fun, quick and easy little things to make um, using a simple shape but starting out just with some six inch squares. So five, six inch squares and that's all you need to make that little bag. So the pattern is on my website, gourmetquarter.com the bag with handles and enjoy those little bags.